Now I'm sitting here and I've got my snaps here, which I'm going to do my initials. And remember, if you refer to your drawing, it'll be in the top right corner. Now there's no specifics for the layout of these, and what I would suggest is that you just try to line them up in a straight line. And I'll show you the technique that I use. Now I'm in the welding room because this is the solid table. In, all, in our shop, this is the most rigid table there is. So when we use a hammer and hit the stamp, all that energy is going to transfer through to your piece. Now the key about stamping is make sure you hit the, the stamp only once because that'll prevent um, double impacts and um, additional marks on your piece of metal. So here we go. I got myself a ball peen hammer and we'll zoom in here and get a look. Now I have um, two stamps and they represent my initials. I'm going to do the last one first because then I can space it from the edge and I'm going to actually work backwards. I'm going to go in that direction. That's a little trick there to help you space them properly. And I've got my piece oriented in a proper location and I'm going to place it down, look at the side, I'm going to peek in from the edge, make sure it's in the right location and then hit it once with a hammer. And what I have is a light impression but it's, it's uh, significant enough that it's solid and it indicates my initial. So I'll do the second one and we'll have a look here. So I've got my M and I'm flipping that upside down. Now what I want to do is I'm going to look at the side here because I want to line these up in the same space here. And I can see the edge of the stamp here by looking at the inner edge like that. Good. Now I'll do another one so that you can see the full view of it. Place my letter right there, straight up and down, put it perfectly on the top. Now for the second one, look at it, line it up, and line it up from the side, compare it to the existing one I just did, straighten it up, grab my hammer, notice how I'm holding it closely for control, nice hit, and as you can see, I've got a nice straight line. So that's the best way to do your initials. Now here's the layout for the hole. The hole is located on the opposite end of the initials, so here's what you need to do. Grab your piece, differentiate with that. Now I like to put my scale down here, and you can see I have a piece of my metal sticking out. I'm going to slide it up to, on the ruler so it reads a quarter inch because it's spaced in a quarter inch from the side. Make sure it's perfect. Use a scriber, scratch my line. And I have one line. I'm going to do the same for the other part. Remember, your strip should be a half inch wide. So, what I'm doing is I'm holding it straight up against the edge of the square here, Just checking with my ruler and marking the line. Now, the intersection of those two lines is where your center punch mark is going to go. I'm going to actually use a prick punch to leave a uh, more precise line. Now to, to lay out your hole, you need to find your the proper location on your piece. And I've got myself a digital caliper here. And if I measure that, it's going to measure 496. 496. And what, I, what this should be is, it should be 0.500 or a half an inch. So this is a little bit undersized. I'm going to compensate that. Divide by 2. 496 divided by 2. And that's going to be 248. Good. See, I've got the numbers written there. I'm going to lock that screw there a bit. And I'm just going to go easily one corner to the other. And if I want to check this on the width, I just go one on one jaw there, slide it across and compare by doing the same on the opposite side. And the intersection of those two lines is where your prick punch mark is going to go and where your hole will be located. The intersection of those two lines is where your prick punch is going to be located and where your punch mark will be. Now to do your punch mark I want to grab myself a sharp pointed center punch here. 
and I'm just going to put it at an angle and put it on the intersection of those two lines and then once I'm absolutely sure by double checking, give it one tap. Check it, if it needs to be deeper, then redo it. Now that I have marked on the location where the intersection of the two lines is for the holes, I'm going to put a, a center punch mark there. So I find the location. Notice how I'm tilting it at the edge because I can pre precisely place my point at the intersection of those two lines. Lift it up, but straight up and down. Now, if it's not quite in the right location, in this case, I have to go in that direction. I'm going to put it in that mark again and bang it at a slight angle. And that should move my mark over. And when I'm happy, I'll just give it another tap. And that allows me to locate the location for the hole. And when I'm going to punch my hole here, there's a couple things that are important to consider. You need to set up the top. And on this case, we're using punch hole number C because it's a sharper punch than B. Originally, we wanted to do B, but uh, it's not punching a hole very well, so we're going to switch it up. Now, if you notice, on the center of the punch, there is a point. That point is going to fit right into that little punch mark that we made there. And that's going to be the location of our hole. Now, so let's set this up. I'm going to put my piece slightly underneath. I'm going to move the handle, lower it down, until I can feel it grab in the center of that punch mark. And then I'll just pull it through and release that. Now, punching short pieces is not easy because you see the punch doesn't like to release them. So just wiggle it a bit and it should come down here. Okay, now, even though your piece got bent a bit, you're gonna flatten that out. And on the opposite side here, there is a little bit of a burr, and that needs to be taken care of. Remember, after you've stamped it, after you've cut all your pieces and done your layout, and straightened these out, you're gonna remove all the sharp edges anyway. That's one of the important steps. And we're gonna do that before welding. When you get your piece out of the hole punch, it may have been deformed or bent a little bit. The easiest way to do that is go over to a flat surface, and I have a small ball-peen hammer, and I'm just going to gently tap on the high spots. You may have to flip it over, and you just want to tap it. I'm checking it and comparing it, making sure it's straight. Um, one thing you can do is use a plastic hammer. Don't hit it too hard with a metal one, or you'll put marks in it. And to guarantee that you don't put marks in it, you can use a plastic hammer. That's the easiest way. Choice of hammers is important. You can either use a plastic hammer, which will not mark the surface of the metal. Or, if you're gentle, you can use a ball-peen hammer. As long as you tap very cautiously and lightly, it won't leave a mark. And as you can see, I've got a strip that's fairly straight, and that'll be easy to weld together. We're over at the coarse buffer here. Once you have your strips, you need to remove all sharp edges. Remember, we've straightened them so they're straight. Uh, here's what you do. We're going to use a left wheel here. This is a, a polishing wheel, so that's the wrong one to use. Use the left side. And I'm just going to run it across the front in the three o'clock position and carefully round the corners and remove any sharp edges. Special care and attention is going to be done at the hole because there's a bit of a burr there from cutting the hole. Here we go. <laughs> One even stroke, both sides. Flip it over to the other side. And that's all you need. Now, for the corner, just like this. Touch and rotate. And that's all you need to do. That's one piece finished. Do that to all 12 pieces, pieces before you weld them together. Do a final inspection, make sure there's no burrs, no sharp edges, and then you're ready to go. Remember, when you weld these together now, they have to be lined up exactly as the drawing shows.